Uh oh. You caught me playing with things I shouldn't probably be touching. And now nothing works right. What are we going to do? So what we're going to have to do here is readjust our index wheel. It is well off and with the key dops that's not going to work well. Some of the tools we're going to need here are the supplied allen keys, a feeler gauge, our 45 degree adapter, and we'll get that dead true in no time at all. So the first thing I like to do is uh, put our index to the 96 position. Now you can still tell the whole quill here, everything isn't locked together. So we're going to get our 45 degree adapter, put it into the quill and tighten down on the key. Step one. Next step I'm just going to put that down, slide our 45 degree adapter into place and dial in about 45 degrees or so, that'll work. Alright, I'm going to lower the mast down until I'm making contact. Very fine. Alright, and there we are. Alright, still have this all loose, but now we've got this. This is where our feeler gauge is going to come in. At the moment, I've only got a 0.4 of a millimeter, 0.04, and I'm just testing to see that there is no gaps underneath my 45 degree adapter. It is sitting dead true on the plate. All right, now from here, we're going to take our smallest Allen key and the screws that we want to be adjusting are these two on either side of the quill. So this is a bit tricky and it is a bit awkward, but once you set it right, there should be no need to set it again. So I've got myself down flat on the plate. I use my feeler gauge. There's a bit of play on this side, and there is absolutely no, um, none on that side. So I'm not quite flat. I'm going to lower the mast down until I hit my 45 again. Put my finger down. Nope. Nope. So what I can begin to do now is gently tighten up these two screws. Not a lot of force on them. I'm just gently tightening them up whilst keeping constant pressure on the plate. I tend to do them as we go, just a little bit on the left, a little bit on the right. No, I don't over tighten one side. And I only go till I start to feel a little bit of pressure. Okay, I'm happy now with these are fairly tight. They're not very, very tight, just firm on both sides. So I can put that down. Now I'm still on my 45 here. I'm still making contact with the plate. What I'm going to do again is check. Can't get under the quilt, under the adapter, and I can't get under the adapter. So I'm going to raise the mast up now, have a look, can take the adapter out, just check, that looks pretty dead centre to me. That means now that this key is always on the 96 gear. So again, I'll put my adapter back in, lower it back down on the plate, check. No. No. That is how you set. You don't need to tighten these too much. 
this is a removable wheel, but now, according to the 45 degree adapter, it is flat. Another way you can test this, I'll show you in a second. So at the moment I'm just going to wind the mast up. I'll get one of my large flat dots. A bit sticky, but I'll get it out. There we go. Insert the large flat top in the end of my quill, tighten down the nut, move some of these tools out of the way. Alright, and what I'm going to do now is just basically set zero degrees as best I can. Settings all messed up from the previous stone. Alright. blue tack on that, but that shouldn't be a problem. I'm going to move my mast into position now and just begin to drop the quill down on. Again, with my feeler gauge, as soon as I begin to make contact, I check. Bit to play on that side. I can't get 0.4 millimeters to fit under that. And that works enough for me. If you need more, that is paper thin, but if you need more precision, you can always get a finer feeler gauge. But that has worked. So now I've double checked with a 45 degree adapter and with the quill itself. I think we're good to go. So one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to slowly lower the mast down. And you can see uh, just about there. And I'm going to test. So I've got movement there. I'm touching the plate all along here. And we're lifting off about here. So I'll spin this plate around a bit. And this is this little focus. I've lost contact there, but I'm on the plate here. So all of that comes back to these screws up here. Pushing this in will rotate that way. Pushing that in there. You want constant pressure on both. At the moment, these are loose. And I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is slowly, at the moment, I'm too high on this side. So what I'm going to do is I've backed this one off, my Allen key, and I'm slowly going to apply a little bit more pressure from this side to push that center pin across until we wind up with a flat level here. So as I am tightening this, the whole time I do a tiny, tiny turn to give you an idea about that much. I stop, I come back, and I test. So now I've got contact to there, all the way across, and you can see it on the indicator. So, still need to come up a little bit, and we're dropping off from about here. So still more adjustment to be done, but very, very small increments. So just to recap everything, as you can see from my drag marks across the lap there, I'm happy with that on this test lap. Uh, much better result here. Once we've finished our adjustments, we just gently tighten these two together. Don't worry about this screw. It's got... It's just a positioner, forward and backwards. We don't need to worry about that in this one, just these two. I wouldn't even try with the bottoms first. Just see if you can get away at the top, because you can actually see there's quite a bit of play in there, and that'll just adjust your quill setting. So, turn, stop, test, keep turning and testing. See how you wind up. But I'm happy with that, 
and as you can see, the uh, the encoder is too. It's quite happy with that. That's within tolerance of the lap here. So I hope that helps anyone. Uh, fairly easy process to do. Extremely easy to reset. Uh, there is some more adjustability down here, but we don't need to worry about that unless we're disassembling the Quill Hub.